Um, look, oh, it's, it's news dump and it's entertainment news, so I figured, why not? Let's have Kale on. Hey, I'm still alive. Yeah. It's I, called News Dump? Yeah, this is because uh, we, we don't really care about entertainment news that much, so we just put it in the trash till the end of the week and then yeah. dra drag all the news stories out of the recycling bin and go over them. It's exhausting. It's like, here's a new photo from movie. It's not coming out for two years. Yeah, it's a, it's a sad show sometimes, but sometimes there's good news too. Oh, do we have any? Uh, at the end, you can tell us how you liked Ant-Man at the Wasp and, and the Wasp, but just don't spoil anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's get started uh, with the fact that Sony hasn't really been known for their firm grasp of the internet over the past couple of years, starting with, most notably, the hack that brought the studio to its knees a few years back, which resulted in leaked emails, leaked movie scripts, and forced the entire place to switch back to pen and paper for a certain amount of time. <laughs> what? It was North Korea's fault. I'm like, parchment? <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> Pen and paper was fine. Yeah. Uh, and now they've proven themselves incompetent once again, thanks to a mistake made earlier this week during a marketing push for a new film titled Kali the Killer. Uh, but it might have actually resulted in a net positive for them when it's all said and done. Because now we know that's a movie. Exactly. <laughs> it's also It's does... not a mistake, it's a happy miracle. Oh, whoops, we leaked this movie you weren't gonna watch. Also, it looks like Kale, by the way, yeah, the way it's spelled. I, I, that was my first thought when I started writing this. Someone in charge of their YouTube account probably just made the simple mistake of not reading the file name in its entirety, or even taking a look at the size of the file. Wow, this trailer's five gigs. <laughs> or the length of the video, because instead of uploading the trailer to their official channel, they uploaded and went live with the entire 90 minute movie. Mm -hmm. Oops, Daisy. Whoops. We're Sony. Yeah. All we can assume is that the person grabbed the file with the name of the movie, assumed that it was just the trailer because why would the entire digital version of the film be hosted anywhere they would have access to? Yeah upload that to YouTube and filed in the info, then scheduled it to go live without double checking it or even looking at the length of it. Extended trailer. You're not gonna upload a movie to this channel, are you? I mean, I might. Yeah, Men and Wasp. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> it's just me with a video camera, people coughing. <laughs> like in like the early 2000s when films would leak and it's like you, get, you see someone get up and go to the bathroom like during the movie. Scene. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it was a fun time. The torrent still exists? I'm not sure. <laughs> now this of course resulted in uh, Kale the Killer, sorry, Callie the Killer, uh, a movie about a hitman who decides to retire after one final job. It resulted yeah. in that being Never readily, seen that. <laughs> readily available for anyone to watch as long as they caught the mistake before it was inevitably deleted from the site. Now, obviously, once people noticed this, uh, it was immediately shared on social media sites, including Reddit, where it became one of the most upvoted videos in the r slash movie subreddit the day that it happened. So you could safely assume that lots of people had the pleasure or displeasure of seeing this movie far before its actual theatrical release date and digital release. That trailer looks terrible. This trailer's too long. Yeah. Thumbs oh, down. How long is it? 90 minutes. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I think they gave away too much in the trailer. <laughs> it turns out that this probably isn't too big of a deal because it was an indie film that had already been released on DVD prior to this new marketing push by Sony who presumably wanted to inject new life into a movie it had purchased the rights to. Mm -hmm. In all honesty, this mistake, which in retrospect might have been a planned move, yeah. actually resulted in far more consumer awareness about the title than it would have ever garnered otherwise. That's a very true statement. Yeah, I you didn't know it existed. Nobody knew this movie existed. Because of the accident full upload, the film basically got free marketing via Reddit, Twitter, and any number of other outlets who ran the story about it, including us right now. Yeah. We're chumps. Yeah. As far as the quality of the film itself, the people who watched it are sending in mixed reviews, many of which are positive, but some being less than stellar, with a certain one-star review on IMDb with the title, A Mess, exclaiming, He's supposed to be a culinary master, but his kitchen is empty. He's supposed to be Latino, but he doesn't speak Espanol. Do you it's like my accent? It's a bad review. Like, <laughs> yeah. if the movie can't get that right, like imagine someone watching it, like they're probably, this person reviewing is probably a Latino chef. Oh, wow. Finally, a movie for me. And uh, they, they, it's like his kitchen, they're like, he doesn't have any utensils. Yeah, that's the wrong knife. It's taking me out of the movie entirely. What a review. Yeah, I mean, when you get someone that like, it's a very specific movie for them, they're gonna be passionate about yeah. it. Yeah, don't watch Grey's Anatomy if you're a doctor though. This is all wrong. <laughs> 
Uh, anyways, the movie's obviously been deleted by now, especially in the wake of all the coverage. Everyone blew its cover. Uh, so I guess you'll have to hunt down the previously released DVD, uh, which is probably in a Walmart bargain bin somewhere, or just wait for Sony's new digital release to find out uh, if it was any good yourself. But who are we kidding? You're not, you're not gonna watch this, and you never would have anyway. Nope. Well, let's move over to things you're more likely to be excited about, uh, like the Fast and Furious spinoff movie, Woo! starring D Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who probably wishes people would stop calling him The Rock Johnson by Never. now, and uh, also Jason Statham. Uh, you know, it's that movie that sparked a very strange feud between The Rock and Vin Diesel that continues to be an issue for Universal. He called him Candy Ass. It's a light rub. But I, I love that. I you know he got upset about it too. Who? Uh, Why are you talking about my ass? <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat candy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so despite Vin's claim that this movie is breaking apart the family. Yeah, I guess. It's family. It's obviously still going to happen. And the latest news about the project until now, aside from the weird drama, was that it's going to be directed by Deadpool 2 and Atomic Blonde director, David Leach. Mm -hmm. This week, we got some pretty big casting news regarding the villain that Luke Hobbs and Deckard Shaw will be teaming up against in the film. Variety is reporting that Idris Elba is in final negotiations to fill the role in Hobbs and Shaw, adding yet another notch in the villainous bedpost alongside other recent evil portrayals like his role as Krall in Star Trek Beyond. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. And as Shere Khan in Disney's live action remake of The Jungle Book. He only plays villains, I didn't notice that. Well, no, he, he was waiting by his phone eagerly to be like, Idris, we did it. We got you the role as James Bond. And he picked up the phone and he was like, is this my time? And they were like, great news, you're the villain in Shaw and Hobbs. Is that what it's called? Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw? Yeah, it rolls off the tongue easier that way. All right, I'm in. But he was supposed to be Black, Black Bond. Oh yeah, that would have been great. I know. Were um, they gonna call it Black Bond? They should have. <laughs> okay. Dwayne Johnson also confirmed this news over on his Twitter account, despite Variety saying that it was in final negotiations, so he jumped the gun a little bit. All right. But it, but it makes it, at this point, Idris would look like an asshole for turning it down, so yeah. I guess it's all part of the plan. Who's gonna Who's gonna stop The Rock from doing that? Sorry, Dwayne okay. Johnson. Okay, I, I'll, I guess I'll do the movie now. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dwayne Johnson said this, he's a bad man. Welcoming my dude Idris Elba with tattooed and opened arms to our Hobbs and Shaw Fast and Furious spin-off movie. Every hero is only as good as their villain. Cue the music, let's dance. What? All right. He gets up very early. By the time he's tweeting, it's been a full day for any normal human. And he's eating three chickens. Yeah, <laughs> time for third lunch. Uh, but anyways, that's not all the exciting villain news we have for you today because apparently that whole Sonic the Hedgehog movie announcement, it wasn't just some sick April Fool's joke. It's actually happening. And we're sure that the results will be horrifying, but here's some news. Okay, gotta go fast, I guess. That's gonna be the tagline. It was previously announced that Jame Marsden and T Tika Sumter, mm -hmm. that's actually easier, yeah. had been cast in what's described as a live action CGI hybrid movie, mm -hmm. but it was never confirmed which character they would be playing. And there's essentially no confirmed info about who is playing the lead role of Sonic. Or his cool brother, Sanic or Tails, or Knuckles. Wow, you know all of them. What about a girl? And even I'm not excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is it, so it's CGI and live action, so like Garfield the movie? I guess. Which I tried to watch last night. I know that's weird. You watched it last night? I tried to watch it, yeah. Mm, Fourth of July. There's fireworks going off. I'm feeling kind of in the mood for something fun. Kick on Garfield. Ugh, yeah. it was so sad. But have they done a, Have they done a movie where they've edited Garfield out of the Garfield movie like they did in the comic strip, Garfield Without Garfield? Oh, I should do that. Yeah. I can't tell in the movie. Who's John in, in the movie? Uh, the, the guy from um, uh, Not Another Teen Movie or something like that? I don't know. Dude, I don't know who that is. Yeah, all right. All right, yeah. <laughs> but, now, but now, thanks to an announcement made this past Thursday, we know who will be taking on the role of Dr. Robotnik. Yeah. Jim Carrey, of course. Uh, which makes sense. Yeah. There's nothing too crazy about Jim Carrey either voicing a CGI version of Dr. Robotnik or throwing himself into some crazy over the top makeup and prosthetics to play the role. He was the Grinch in a live action version after all. And that movie was horrifying. Yeah. What's strange about the whole thing is that there's a Sonic the Hedgehog movie at all and one that apparently has a big enough budget to lock down some major actors to portray its characters. Mm -hmm. Is he gonna be floating around in that like Egg with a propeller on the bottom. Yeah, the whole and he's got to gain a ton of weight. Yeah, yeah, he's literally Eggman. And 
are there rings involved? Is he's gonna is he gonna be running through loop de loops like the Sonic? Is it like is there gonna be a game based oh, on it? Is there? <laughs> <laughs> I would be very excited to see the casino level. That would be visually stunning. Maybe it'll turn out like a uh, Speed Racer. Visually stunning with little to no depth, but and still then, a pretty movie. And then nobody watches it. Well, 10 years later, it's yeah. it's lauded as a great creation. They want a sequel, the Wachowskis want to do one, so. What? Maybe okay. We'll <laughs> right. Maybe we're out of touch, but is Sonic big enough a character to pull in young audiences? What kids are like chomping at the bit to get a Sonic movie? The people that do like fan fiction, I guess. I guess we'll find out one way or another whether this movie finally makes it to the big screen sometime in 2019. Yeah. They had a Candyland movie that they were working on. That never came to yeah, fruition. they brought up a bunch of like Milton Bradley and like other, and just after Battleship, it was like, well, yeah, I guess we shouldn't do this. I'm looking forward to Connect Four in theaters 2020. Yeah. Uh, anyways, here's a few more entertainment news scraps that we picked up. <laughs> you might be interested in some of these. Uh, it has been confirmed that Doctor Strange 2 is happening. Okay. okay. Yeah, this news shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone, yeah. but you know what? Kevin Feige went ahead and confirmed it during an interview with Cinema Blend where he said, sometimes it's where do those characters pop up? Doctor Strange, you know, whenever we do another Strange movie, which we will do, it will be a number of years from the first Strange, and yet he's a very big part of Infinity War. So it is just a good problem to have when you have too many beloved characters that people want to see more of, whilst keeping to our core belief that we need to keep exploring nuance and keep doing different types of things. Anyways, they got their headline out of that interview, so good for them. Yeah, there you go. He sure. said it. Well, I mean, like, is this now ruining who's going to survive Infinity War? Oh, it's already been ruined. They, they get Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Doctor Strange. Yeah. Uh, there's a Guardians of the Galaxy. They may kill off some of them. Sonic. Yeah, Sonic's yeah. getting a movie. Sonic, yeah. He, he was, everyone knows that he was one of the ones killed when Thanos <laughs> snapped his fingers. I don't feel so fast. And yeah. then he fades away. Slowly fades away. <laughs> uh, obviously, there's nothing more to add to this since the movie doesn't even have a year of release set in stone. So, But, but it's happening. Someday. And there's three Marvel movies coming out every year till my kids die. I don't have any, but you they, know. They will fully grow and die before there's less Marvel movies than there is now. Yep. Uh, if you're into very strange, did you do that? On no, purpose? no, this has nothing to do with Doctor Strange, but I guess I was just in a strange mood. <laughs> If you're in a very strange and probably small center of the Venn diagram, where one side consists of Miles Teller fans and the other side consists of fans of the character Goose who dies in Top Gun, you're in luck, <laughs> you <Yeah>. freak. <laughs> Miles Teller has just been cast as Goose's son in Maverick, the sequel to Top Gun, which we're sure will make for at least a few awkward conversations where his character blames Maverick for his father's death. And probably fucked his mom. Let's be let's be honest. Sick. <laughs> and finally, in a, oh, it's, it's a, that's a completely different That's one. it. Can I just talk about how much I hate Miles Teller? I thought he was great in that drum movie. That's one. Yeah, so he has one. All right. Well, you didn't like the, uh, what was it, the movie where they're teenagers with powers or something? Like Fantastic Four? Oh yeah, he was in that. I didn't see it. <laughs> Wait, what's the teenagers with power one? What's Are you thinking of, um... oh God. Wow, I was, forgot. what a great movie. Yeah, that's the that's the Max Landis one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the one where the teenagers, they get powers. I don't think that was him. I don't know. Mm. Anyway. I'm not part of that Venn diagram. Yeah, obviously. we're not in that Venn diagram I like diagram Whiplash, good movie. So you're in the, you're in the Whiplash, nothing else. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, in, in uh, horror news, despite the fact that uh, Child's Play and the whole franchise and Chucky himself have, have consistently released films over the past 30 years, it's getting a reboot. Oh. Yeah. Lars Klevberg is set to direct the reboot and it'll be produced by David Katzenberg and Seth Graham Smith, who recently, oh. they, they knocked it out of the park with the It reboot, so. Wait, Seth Graham Smith did that? I guess he so, also yeah. did like Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. You know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, with them on board, it could turn out great, but as campy as they are, the Chucky movies, even the recent ones, they're not terrible. They're just fun midnight movies, straight to DVD. Uh, if this team can bring something new to the table and turn this back into a big budget theatrical release franchise and not just straight to DVD stuff, who knows? It could be good. I, I don't know. I know a lot of horror purists are upset about this news from what I've read online, but I don't get why. It was a good movie. It's got the producers from It. I think they just really love the campiness of And they're afraid they'll take the campiness out? Yeah. Like oh, it's gonna be too serious. Sorry, they're but not like, just gonna- What does a Chucky doll look like in 2018 or 2019? Cause like the, the one has consistently lived over Tamagotchi. 30 years. 
No, that's like, that's 1999. Oh, sorry. I've been in cryostasis. That's why you haven't seen me in a while. Yeah. Can I say something that I'm not sure is racist? Okay. All right. Mexicans love Chucky. And I say that because I'm half Mexican and my family loves Chucky. They're like, hey, yeah, Chucky. That's not, that's not right. That's my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, They love Chucky. So, I mean, you got that's the target audience. Like, I when I read this online, I'm like, people are really upset about this. And I think it's because one of those things where it's like they're messing with their childhood into adulthood. And it's like, no, he's a sacred character. Don't fuck with Chucky. And the, the only thing I'm worried about is like, what does a Chucky doll in 2019 look like? It has to be like fully animatronic. Like, yeah. it's not even like, if you saw a Chucky doll now, you wouldn't think it was possessed by a murderer. You would just be like, oh, it's a, it's a, the, the year is 2018 and dolls can do that. They can walk and talk and stab me. <laughs> like you've seen the fucking, bo it's it. like a Boston Dynamics robot. Oh, nice, you just kick it over? Yeah. You know, I'm gonna call it a hipster finds it, thinks it's super retro. Oh yeah, like a flea market. Yeah, look, honey, look. Does his mustache? He's like, oh, it's retro. Now let me get on one of my big wheeled bikes and take it home. And he takes his kombucha and he takes a drink of the. Wait, you're starring in this movie. It's me. Oh. Chucky's back. But yeah, it's time to talk about trailers uh, with a. Well, you you know what? You talk about this one. You'll probably like it. Okay, I'm gonna read it. Like I'm coming off th this off the top of my head. Now it's time to talk about trailers. Starting with the trailer for Netflix's new animated series, Disenchantment. If the animation style looks like The Simpsons to you, well, yeah. That obviously makes sense because the show was created by Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons. How did you not know that, you kids that are watching this show? Where have you been? Disenchantment follows the story of Bean, an alcoholic princess, her elf friend Elfo, and her personal demon named Lucy, who all live in a medieval kingdom known as Dreamland. Fun. Oh, yeah. At, well, it's like Kirby's, anyway. Yeah. As you could assume, the voice cast for this show is great, with actors like Billy West, John DiMaggio, Eric Andre, really? And Abby Jacobson leading their talents to the production. Yeah. Disenchantment releases its full 10 episodes season just over a month from now, August 17th. Yes. It looks okay. Yeah, but I mean, like, we get to watch it all at once and... Yeah, it'll be good to binge. Like, uh, Futurama was great. The Simpsons were great. Maybe this will have a good first couple of seasons and peter off. Well, it's great is we have nothing to lose. It's just like I already own Netflix. Yeah. That's the best part about all the Netflix shows. And the further we go along, the worse the shows get for the most part. But it's, I'm already paying for it. Yeah. They're fine. Come on, they've got BoJack. Like, I'm sure they're going to be leaning great, towards yeah. the same, like, depressing crap. Yeah, it so. seems like it'll be an adult-themed show, so that, that could be good. Uh, also, there's a new trailer for House with a Clock in Its Walls. Starring Kate Blanchett and Jack Black. Now, this is based on a 1970s children's book of the same name. And it's about a kid whose parents die, so he's sent to live with his uncle, who, surprise, is a warlock. Oh, I thought uh, you were gonna say war clock. <laughs> he's a war veteran. <laughs> <laughs> he's a war veteran, he's very angry. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he How these war clocks get in the walls? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's having flashbacks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyways, he's a warlock. Uh, once he gains this knowledge, the kid, of course, he dives headfirst into the world of magic and sorcery, wherein he discovers the existence of a magical clock cur cursed with black magic that an evil wizard named Isaac Izzard created. Hopefully they get Eddie Izzard to play the role of, of oh, Isaac Izzard. I was thining the same thing. Yeah. The, the boy and his uncle, they have to find this clock and save the world from impending doom. Now, okay, we should mention that the only reason this film is even on our radar is because Eli Roth is directing a children's movie. So we're at least morbidly curious about the whole thing, considering Roth is mostly known for his over-the-top murder porn filmography, which includes titles like Hostel, Hostel 2, Cabin Fever, and The Green Inferno. Ooh. So it'll be interesting to see what type of nuance he brings to the table. Oh boy. Well, Jack Black as well. Like Jack Black will be disemboweled. Scooby doo! Yeah. Oh, oh, my intestines are falling out. <laughs> well, you're feeding them to me now. This isn't how the movie should be going. Uh, anyways, Kale, you saw, you had the privilege yeah. of seeing Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mm -hmm. And I am very curious about this. It's the only movie I'm even excited for this summer. I'm Really? I still haven't seen Jurassic World, Incredibles, or anything else. I, I am going to go see this. Do not spoil it, but please let me know that my hype for one movie this summer is founded in reality. Is it good? 
Yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, yeah. people have said that it's better though the people that I was sitting next to because I went to the screening at Disney, the Disney Studio a lot. Oh well, then you're just saying that it's good because they gave you free popcorn and played the you know the. They fed us beforehand. They had like a Mickey whole thing came out. free alcohol oh. and stuff like that. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> good, yeah. Hand job while we're doing. No, you're never this. coming back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's basically just a continuation of the first one. And by that, I mean, same tone. They don't drop the ball. Paul Rudd is like a lovable man that, you know, if he knocked on your door and was like, we're gonna fuck you, yeah. do it. It's, yeah, no, it's great. You'd love it. Um, right. uh, th my only gripe for me is that because you heard this is like kind of its own standalone and it's yeah, yeah. like before Infinity War, mm -hmm. I had a trouble kind of like thinking that anything matters. Yeah, so, it's kind of like my Rogue One issue where I'm like, but I already know what happens. Yeah. So Rogue One was kind of boring. Because you know the characters like, well, I'm never going to see them again. So you go to the theater and like you're watching it and someone screams, half the population's going to die. Who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that. But it's a, it's a fun romp, I guess. Yeah, it's great. It's a yeah. fun, entertaining, uh, the, like it, things have gotten so serious in the Marvel world that it's just fun to kind of like have Good. fun and see ants and stuff. That's what I'm saying. Real ants. Yeah, real big ants. Uh, anyways, uh, this Sunday we have a brand new episode of Idiots Watching Anime coming out, so make sure that you tune into that. We watched, uh, what's it called? See, this is how bad I am at anime. Uh, Attack on Titan. Oh yeah! Which is the first one we've watched that was serious. Oh. I don't consider Dragon Ball serious, it's a goofy show. This show was, I was like, wow, this anime is for adults too. Hmm, cool. Well, you'll see our full opinion, uh, me and Elliot's on Sunday. Uh, where we do the episode on Attack on Titan. It, it's, spoiler, I liked it. Uh, but if you're a Patreon supporter, you can watch it now. You go to the Patreon page, there is a link, and we released it earlier to Patreon supporters. So thank you for supporting. Thank you. Oh, and, thank uh, you. Yeah, and we'll see you, uh, we'll see you next week. Hopefully Elliot's still alive in the Philippines somewhere. <laughs> we haven't heard from him. He's posting on Twitter, and I think that's his like lifeline. It'd be like, if, if photos are coming out, Oh, okay. Still good. Nice. If, if you haven't seen a photo in 24 hours, Rodrigo Duterte has captured me, and oh, I am man. dying. What, he'll make him host like his own show there. Yeah, yeah. He has to do uh, the Philippines news, but it's all positive. ETC uh, Philippines. And we made our own Ant-Man, and it's great. The, the <laughs> critics gave it 10 out of 10. Kale still didn't like it, because it didn't mean anything. In the grand <laughs> <laughs> and it, we are deporting him to the Philippines soon to make sure that he changes that. We're going to get Mickey to dance for him. Oh. That'll be great. Thank you, Kale, for joining us. Yeah, of course. And we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>